Hello, and welcome to Pulumi TV. My name is Mike Metrol. Today we're going to show how to get started with Kubernetes by deploying a Python Flask app in a Postgres database. Let's begin. In this episode, we'll show how to deploy a Kubernetes cluster on Amazon's Elastic Kubernetes Service, EKS. Then we'll show how to deploy a Postgres database on Amazon's Managed Database Service, RDS. And then lastly, we'll deploy a Python Flask app onto the Kubernetes cluster that will be able to talk and communicate with the Postgres database to do writes when we hit its API that we'll expose to the public internet. As always, you can follow along with this video and this code by visiting the Pulumi TV repo in our Pulumi GitHub org. Let's begin. For starters, I'm going to create a new VPC that will allow me to create public and private subnets across all of the AZs in the region that I'm working within. This is US West 2 for me. Once the VPC comes up, we can actually define and create the cluster for Kubernetes on EPS by giving it some properties, such as the VPC to run in, public and private subnets of that VPC. We're going to say, don't deploy a dashboard. We're going to add some tags based on some business logic we want to track. And then more importantly, we're going to disable public IPs on our nodes. So when we set this, what we're actually saying is that the nodes should be housed in the private subnets that we're specifying here. But we're also going to provide some public subnets so that way we can create some resources on AWS, such as load balancers that require being in public subnets. The cluster will then be instantiated and we'll be able to extract its kubeconfig. And once the cluster is up, we can actually start to see how we can create a Postgres database as well on RDS. We'll specify the private subnets for it to use. These are the same ones that we're specifying to the cluster because we need the RDS cluster to only be accessible to the nodes in our cluster. That is allowed, by, uh, allowed and enforced by the security group to be using the same one as the nodes do in the cluster. We'll give it replicas too because we want an extra reader to be added to our RDS cluster if we want multiple, multiple writers and multiple readers. We'll give it an instance class to consume the instance type that we need, some tags. And then more importantly, once the cluster comes up, we can actually retrieve the information we need for the database, such as its host, port, username, password, and database name from the database so we can expose that to other applications or other consumers of the output of this Pulumi stack, which brings me to a great next point. We have two different stacks here that we're going to be consuming. We're going to stand up an infrastructure stack that will create our Kubernetes cluster, our RDS database, and export the information for that RDS database running Postgres. Then we'll jump into a new stack, the application stack, which we'll review in just a second, that will consume the kubeconfig database connection and namespace that's created from the former stack by leveraging in Pulumi what's known as a stack reference. We'll jump into that in just a second. Let's see what the infrastructure looks like when we try to run it. So I've taken the liberty of actually running this update because it can be a little bit time consuming, but we can show you that if we try to run another update, what's gonna happen is because there was no changes to our database or our cluster's definition, nothing's gonna change. So as the preview shows, this essentially will be a no-op. Once the update completes, we'll verify it was in fact a no-op. Great. I can see the stacks output by saying Pulumi stack output. And I can see that I've been given a kubeconfig and a database connection object that houses all the properties I need to communicate with the database. Of note, you can see the database connection actually maps the password with the secret ciphertext, so you can't actually view it uh, by default. But we can actually extract that from other stacks and not worry, but get the full information we need to communicate with the database. Let's leverage the kubeconfig output to communicate with kubectl and see what nodes are in our cluster. Okay, great. Now let's use kubectl to see what pods are currently running in our cluster. Okay, great. So with the infrastructure officially up with the cluster running and the RDS database provisioned, let's jump into our app stack that will reference our infrastructure stack for the kubectl and database connection string. As we've seen, we define these properties in the app stacks config, and now let's consume it in our index.ts. We'll create a new provider with the infrastructure stacks kubeconfig and namespace to use. And then we'll create a new instance of what we've called our demo app. In this case, it's a Python Flask app 
that knows how to communicate with Postgres and do writes to the database through an API that it exposes. This app is publicly available and available for use on the Docker Hub at this user and repo name. And if we jump into what this demo app's definition looks like, we can see it too is another extension of the Pulumi component resource class, which allows us to manage resources together that should be managed in the same lifecycle. So I can see that I can start to take the database connection information from the infrastructure stack and create a Kubernetes secret with that information so that this set of credentials runs in a temporary file system on Kubernetes when it's mounted onto a pod instead of living locally on disk. This Kubernetes secret will actually be used by the pod through its environment variables that we're essentially defining here. We can take the database connection secret, do an apply on it since it's a Pulumi output, much like a future or a promise, grab its data such as its host, port, username, password, and database, and start to set up what these various environment variables need to be based on our application's usage of it. So we can see, I can also specify a SQL Alchemy URI that is required by our Flask app. I'll then actually pass that environment into what we are creating here, known as the pod builder, which is the root of our app. So we have its environment. We can use the image name we've specified here. We'll give it some resources and have it run on a port 5000 per its definition. We'll put that pod into a deployment, give it two replicas, and then we'll create a service on that deployment to expose it to the internet by creating a publicly typed load balancer that will front the Flask app. This knows how to target the pod by using the target port HTTP we've defined here. Let's actually run this application. So I'm going to create a new stack called dev in my application stack. I'll set a Pulumi config to be the user project and stack name of our infrastructure stack, which we can go back to our infrastructure stack and pull from by running Pulumi stack ls and see that it matches this string here. So we'll set that and we'll do a Pulumi up. Do I want to run this update? Yes. So this is gonna go off and create the secret for our database that we are pulling the information from the database connection object in our infrastructure stack. This secret will then be mounted onto a deployment object of the Python Flask app, and then it will be exposed through a public load balancer using a service. Let's run this update. So this update can take approximately 30 or seconds or so, and then once it's up and running, it'll take about a minute or two for the public load balancer to be provisioned and ready. Great, the update completed. Because it's gonna take another minute or two for the load balancer to actually be accessible, let's see a couple of uh, neat things that we have in these stacks. So if I do a Pulumi stack output on this stack, I'll see that this stack's output has an instance URL that we've created by taking the load balancer's uh, host name and then prefixing it with HTTP. This allows us to share this address for the application with users or with other Pulumi programs. Let's actually jump into the database by going up here. Here we've logged in with psql to jump into the RDS database that we've provisioned in the infrastructure step before. We can see what tables that currently exist and see that we have two tables, a basic one that comes included with most RDS instances and Postgres instances, and the account table, which is a reflection of the account object model that we have in our Python Flask app. If I do a select all from account, I have nothing currently. So let's see if our application is up and running. We're going to leverage the stack output in curl by passing it in as an argument to curl. Let's see if the cluster, or let's see if the application is fully up. There it is, our API responsive with hello world. Great, one more time. Great, so on the root path of this 
application, we expose uh, a basic response that just returns in JSON, hello world. There's also an accounts path that allows us to do a post request to write to the database by creating a new account name. So I'm going to do a post request to the same Flask API that we have provisioned on Kubernetes. And I'm going to say, pass in the new account name, Mike. And we're going to use the instance URL, just like we did with curl before. We'll give it the accounts path. And let's see what that returns. Great. The Mike account was successfully created in the database. Let's verify that in RDS. If I do a select star from account one more time, there's a Mike entry into the account database, or sorry, the account table. Great. So in this episode, we covered a couple of different things. We covered multiple stacks, such as the infrastructure stack for our Kubernetes cluster on EKS and our RDS database for Postgres. In our application stack, we are able to consume the output of our infrastructure stack to get the information we need, such as the kubeconfig, the namespace, and the database connection information to form a database connection string after it's been placed in a Kubernetes secret that gets set into our environment variables and ultimately mounted into our pod that our deployment manages and our service publicly exposes to the internet. That's all the time I have to, for today. I hope you've learned a great deal. Thank you and have a great day.